Salutare tuturor, sunt Mădă de la Criptonita și ne revedem în această seară cu un video surpriză în exclusivitate. Fondatorul Ethereum, Vitalik Buterin, este la București. Vă invit să urmăriți clipul și să vedeți ce a avut acesta de spus. Înainte de a începe, vrem să-i mulțumim lui Mihnea de la Stakeboard pentru ajutor. Mulțumim mult, Mihnea! Hi, Vitalik! Hi! Uh, welcome to Romania! Thank you! Um, something easy to start with. Uh, tell us about maybe how you see the, let's say, the crypto community in Romania. Uh, on one hand, maybe on the user side, but on another hand, also maybe the development side that you are more familiar with. Hmm. I, I guess it's like it, it's difficult to answer after only a day here. Um, I guess uh, the things that I've noticed so far, like I mean, there's definitely just the like, seemingly a lot of like good technical talent working on all kinds of uh, all kinds of interesting projects. Right? Like uh, there's. Uh, It was uh, like Elrond is based here, like a bunch of like random random stuff, like on crypto compares here. There's uh, what a I, well, I, I actually the Gaff team. Yeah. Well, I, I guess n more in uh, Kuj than in Bucharest, but that's still uh, you know the Gaff team does a lot of hard work. Very smart people. Um, Yeah, no, it just it, it does seem like there's just like a, a lot of good technical talents and just people interested in like doing, um, doing interesting things all around, which is always good. Um, as far as like users and what people use crypto for goes, well, I guess I haven't really talked to many users yet, um, but I uh, mean, I would love to. Um, I don't know. Do you do you have any impressions about like, what, what what people use uh, crypto here for? Right. So. Uh -huh. Actually, this kind of leads to a second question. Uh, I think crypto usage in itself is, is picking up in Romania. Mm -hmm. And I okay. think something that maybe mm. we're seeing uh, more of a need for is the, let's say, ease of use and everything and right. all the wallets mm -hmm. and everything. Mm. So I think that's something yeah. where mm. the Romanian users are, you know, Right, it's 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 like starting to go from like highly technical users to less technical users, and yeah. that's the challenge. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of places are going through that kind of uh, peak right now. Right, like it's there's a bit of this uh, kind of imbalance that you see, right? Where if you look at the statistics in lots of countries, it's like 10 to 40 percent of people like have heard of crypto, even have crypto or something, and then. If you look at like the people in the communities who like go to the meetups and spend all day reading the forums, like it's a very few. So, I definitely think the the space needs to be better at um, like dealing with people who aren't willing to dedicate their entire lives to it. Um, there, there's a lot of things that like I've been trying to push for to try to improve things. Like so, like, for example, like multi-sig wallets and social recovery wallets. Like I've been. A big fan of those, right? Like people need ways to store their coins and to just like store their accounts that uh, you know isn't vulnerable to them just like losing their coin, their keys, and losing your their like phone, and then losing everything or just everything getting stolen. Um, and also, is not completely centralized. Um, so I think uh, like if the people pushing the decentralized solutions don't kind of like work hard and uh, make sure they uh, provide what people want, then everyone's going to gravitate toward the centralized stuff and that's going to be hard to reverse. Um, so that's, I mean, it's definitely something I care about and I've, and I've been pushing for. The uh, account abstraction proposal that I uh, published, uh, I think like two weeks ago is also uh, very much about that. I guess, yeah, so that's, um, definitely very um, very important um the other kinds of kind of there's also other kinds of ease of use right like there's just ease of getting it into the crypto space for example and like that's more of a country by country thing right because you have to like deal with regulation deal with the local banking system like deal with local like different payment systems in different ways of like, actually getting cryptocurrency um actually how is the how is the situation with that here So we, we actually have uh, Romanian exchanges even, so mm. th there are uh, on-ramps right now. Mm. I think one thing to mm. keep in mind is the you know people with not that big of a balance, let's call it. Right. And this kind of leads me to the, let's say, yeah. all of the layer two scaling yes. efforts. <laughs> And maybe you can share some of your views mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, let's say, mm -hmm. in Romania, many people don't have you know big balances, so mm -hmm. they may be see uh mm -hmm. you know like some friction into mm -hmm. transacting with uh, yep. ETH. 
-hmm. and there's this whole L2 effort. Mm -hmm. um, how do you see this ease of use component for you know the L2 area mm -hmm. where you need to bridge your tokens and all of those? No, you, you made a, make a good point. L layer two is very, very important. Like, I think scalability is extremely important for a lot of people right now. And like, yeah, it, for people who like don't have a lot of money, like those are the exact same people who often tends to be excluded from the traditional financial systems the most, and the ones who need crypto the most. So it's uh, really important to help them. Um, I, I think the good news over the last few months is that layer twos are finally kind of moving from being like theory to being a reality. Right, like you know, Arbitrum exists. You can deploy things on Arbitrum. Um, Polygon um, acquired as uh, Young Hermes, so now like they're not today. They're still a trusted side chain, right? Like so, today everything's still in this kind of transition step. But they, yeah, you know, have a very strong roadmap toward uh, become uh, becoming or adding as as EK rollup in the future, which is just uh, really amazing. Um, optimism. Um, they recently did a bunch of uh, upgrades to their fraud proof design. Um, so one of the things that's happening also is that uh, everything's converging on kind of just EVM compatibility. So just being on the same environment, right? It's like a year ago, Loopring existed, right? Loopring was, uh, you know, ZK roll up a very low fee, very scalable, but all you can do is payments. And it turns out that just like, wasn't yet good enough to attract a lot of people. Um, but now, you know, the ZK rollups are moving toward uh, being uh, having EVM support. The um, um, optimism, their uh, fraud proof change allows them to move from being kind of 95% EVM compatible to 100% EVM compatible. So everyone's moving to the same framework, right? And one of the benefits of everyone moving to the same framework is that the things that we're doing at other layers of the stack, right? Uh, you can just uh, like apply them on layer one, apply them on all layer twos at the same time. So for example, the yeah, account abstraction stuff, like a multi-sig social recovery wallet, like all of these ease of use things that I talked about, like what the tech is there and you can just like, you know, put it on the main layer one, you can put it on Optimism, put it on Arbitrum, you know, put it on ZK Ethereum when that becomes ready and uh, it just works. Um, so a lot of te a lot of the pieces of uh, technology are coming together. And also like if you don't uh, uh, deeply understand the technology and you just like want something that you can actually use, well, you know, like Arbitrum is there, you can actually use it. Um, you know, Optimism is there, there's a lot of applications you can use. Polygon has been uh, there for a while, you can use it. The kind of the bridging between them is getting better and better. Um, so, I'm very optimistic. I mean, I'm. Uh, I, I, it, it definitely has taken a while, and uh, I mean, I think like in the Ethereum ecosystem, you know, we value kind of doing things the properly decentralized way and not taking shortcuts. I mean, and that's uh, so. You know, we're not the sort of chain that's just going to say, okay, fine, like we're gonna raise the, the gas limit by a factor of 100 and make a block every second and like who cares if nobody can't run a node anymore right like we're but like, you know we don't do that right but th what that does mean is that to act to scale we do have to actually kind of try hard and uh, scale properly but we, the, those efforts are finally paying off like the, the, the solutions are uh, like actually exist and they're um, coming online right. more and more so right. very optimistic looking forward to l2 being the gateway for more people into mm -hmm. this yeah, thank you too. for taking the time. Mm -hmm. I think that's all. Yeah. And uh, thank you. Enjoy the session. Hope you enjoy it too.